about to shift. Just like it says on that wall. That's not just a slogan. That's what's happening. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was in the men's zone, we didn't pray quietly. We prayed violently. Don't lose your violence in prayer. Come on, pray in the... This is a 9 o'clock service. We're not going to scare nobody. Come on, begin to pray in Shakarava. Let's set the tone for what the Lord's doing today. How many believe something can shift today? Come on, close your eyes and begin to lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. to be a little quieter, a little older crowd sometimes, a little richer. Come on, somebody. But how many know if the Lord's blessed you, you should be the loudest praiser in the... So I'm going to give you an opportunity. Come on, if God's been good to you, if the Lord has saved you, if the Lord has rescued you, if the Lord has healed you, if the Lord has... Come on, for about 30 seconds, throw your hands up. stay all day in the house of God how many know Sundays is like Chick-fil-A they close on Sunday we open on Sunday come on you my Chick-fil-A <laughs> and how many know Sundays are for the Lord amen and in church Sunday we're, we're in church all day Sunday getting fed getting filled so Monday comes we're ready to slap that devil upside the head I mean, we're not going into Monday dragging. Oh, no. How I many we're going into Monday ready for the victory, ready to save souls, ready to make disciples, ready to make some prosperity, ready to raise our children. Come on, somebody ought to give God a praise like Sunday. We get filled with that anointing. Father, we ask you that you would move in a powerful way all day. Starting this morning, we're going to set the tone for, the, for what you want to do all day. And Lord, I want to I want to thank you for the opportunity now, uh, for for allowing me to be here with this great church, this great movement, these great leaders and leadership team. I pray that there would be a blessing on today, and I pray, Father, that you would shift something. It's already begun to shift. Shift something today, Father. Move us into what you have next. We're, wed, we're ready. We're willing for what you have for us next. 
We will obey you. We will go where you want us to go. We will do what you've asked us to do. And we will be faithful to the vision that you've entrusted us with. In Jesus' name, we ask you to have your way. And all of God's sons and daughters of the house of Victory Outreach of Heaven, I need you to put both hands together and give them a praise offering. Pastors Al and Georgina are on a much needed vacation. I think they're on their way home. And uh, how many love Pastor Al and Georgina? But you know, they couldn't leave like that the way they leave and travel and help the world without a congregation like you backing them up. We got leaders like you, my brothers over here and my sisters. And how many thank God for the leaders that God has raised up to hold the ladder? of leaders. Come on, clap like you have leaders holding the ladder of leaders. Layers of leaders. Thank God for that. Today, uh, I was, I had like five messages I wanted to preach to you. You know, don't you hate that? How many preachers do I have in the house? Preachers, like, you're like, man, this is a good one, and this is a better one, and oh, that's a good point. Maybe I can make them all into one, but and I preached a message yesterday at, our, at, our, at one of our youth conferences, and Man, I was like, that's a, unleashing the fire of God. Uh, oh, that's a good one, Lord. And the Lord's like, no, you're going to preach on prayer. You're going to preach on prayer. Come on, clap like we're going to, we're going to, we want to learn about prayer. And so tonight, I think I'm going to flow with a message called the breakthrough anointing. But that's tonight. That's like the candy. Come on. <laughs> we're going to get into the academy right now. Come on. Say prayer. The title of my message is Prayer, the Great Shifter. Prayer, the Great Shifter. And I was going to call it the Shifter of Seasons because I believe, Victory Outreach San Diego, you're moving into another season. I, I believe the Lord has been faithful up to this point, but He's about to move this ministry. And I believe globally, I believe God is releasing a wave of His power. I was ministering at the mother church two weeks ago and I felt the same message. I had a message talked about the weapons of warfare and had one scripture was on prayer but the, mess, the rest of the, the scriptures were for, for other elements of how to have victory in warfare. But all of a sudden when I was preaching on prayer at the mother church something came on me like a mantle and for 20 minutes straight with one scripture I preached on prayer because I realized that's what God was saying to the mother church how many believe God is saying to Victory Outreach International it's time not just for theology we need some old school neology clap like you believe in neology come on clap like you believe in neology because when God, when God's sending us a third wave a third wave. I didn't even really realize what it is. I, I, I was pre preaching at the mother church and I said, I feel like there's a wave coming. And afterwards they're like, Pastor, that's that third wave. I said, third wave? You're talking about the youth? Yeah. I said, okay, that's what God is saying. He's going to raise up the young people. He's going to raise up the next generation. But you know, they're talented. They're gifted. They're going to be given buildings. They're going to be given an inheritance. But the greatest inheritance we can give to the next generation is not just buildings. It's not just things. It's the anointing of God and the anointing comes from prayer. Praise God for skinny jeans. Praise God for social media. Praise God for being modern, and we should. But in the name of Jesus, without the anointing, we have nothing. But how many when we pray, the anointing shows up, and it's the anointing of God that breaks the bondage. Say prayer. The great shifter. And I believe it shifts us from seasons to seasons. It shifts us from one season of glory to the next season of glory. I mean, no, God doesn't take us to one level and then takes us down. I mean, no, we go from faith to faith. We go from increase to increase. We go from glory to glory. We go from leadership to leadership. We go from nation to nations. Come on, cloud. Like nations are opening up. Prayer does all that. Prayer opens up nations that were closed. Prayer brings down walls of communism. Prayer brings down walls of addiction. Prayer brings down the walls of opposition where people hate it, city hated, things hated. Favor shows up and those walls come down. Jericho comes down where prayer is released. 
Prayer. Say prayer. Number one, prayer cancels Satan's plans and releases God's plan. It cancels Satan's plans and releases God's plan. Matthew chapter 6, 9 and 10 said, Pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So right there we know that prayer releases the kingdom of God, the dominion of God. Do you remember when Jesus uh, 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 prayed for people and the demons came out and the lepers were cleansed and the incurables were cured you could say the drug addicts were set free the broken were healed and, and he said he said the kingdom has come the dominion of God has come the kingdom of God has come because before where there was that sickness where there was that bondage where there was that addiction where there was whatever the bondage was he said there was a kingdom there the kingdom of Satan had rulership in that life. But when the kingdom of God showed up, that old kingdom was moved and the kingdom of God showed up. How many know we need to pray for the kingdom of God to show up in our city, in our community, in our family? Somebody say kingdom. You know, sometimes we in our families we're dealing with uh, iniquities. Iniquities bring the curses. There's two types of sin, transgression and iniquity. Transgression is the sin you stumble, you didn't mean to stumble. Iniquity is the sin you planned on sinning. Hello. And we'll talk about that later, about backsliding. But that iniquity is a curse. And that if it's left there, that's how the, the curses come on a family. And then that curse is passed to the kid. And then the kid, and that's how the generational curse comes. And all of a sudden, the dominion of Satan is there. How many know prayer begins to break those curses? That's why if your kids are in bondage, your family's in bondage, you, they're in bondage. How many know prayer breaks the bondage, reverses the curse, and releases blessing? Come on, clap like you believe there's power in prayer to cancel Satan's plan. When my mom was believing for me, and she was praying and praying and praying, it, it looked like things were getting worse. It looked like the enemy was winning. How I many know sometimes when it looks worse, it's right about it's about to get better. Sometimes right before things get better, the things shift into the next level. Things begin to shift seemingly in the wrong way. And it's Satan trying to establish his kingdom, trying to discourage our faith. But how many know we got to keep praying, and we got to keep praying, and we got to keep praying. And if we keep praying, that spirit that's holding our families, that spirit that's holding our loved one, that spirit that's holding our increase, how many know that thing has to let it go, and the kingdom of God will show up? Somebody say prayer. Come on, say prayer. Prayer establishes the will of God on earth like it is in heaven. How many know there's freedom in heaven? There's healing in heaven. There's prosperity in heaven. There's wisdom in heaven. There's joy in heaven. When a church begins to pray, they begin to experience the heaven on the earth. How many know that's what we want in Victory Outreach San Diego? We want heaven to touch the earth. Super hit our natural. In Matthew 18, 18, it said it this way. I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on the earth will be loosed in the heaven. What he's saying is if you can change it in the spirit, you can change it in the natural. If you can break it in the spirit, it'll break in the natural. If you can bind it in the spirit, it'll be bound in the natural. And if we can loose it in the spirit, it will be loosed in the natural. How many are believing God for some things to show up in the natural? Prayer is what takes care of business. John W., John Wesley said, God does nothing except in response to believing prayer. That's why God said to Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. Then you're going to call on me and you're going to pray to me and I'm going to listen to you. And you're going to seek me and you're going to find me when you seek me with all your heart. So God is saying there, I have a plan for you. A prosper you. I remember when I first heard this scripture, my pastor was preaching this scripture and I, it was kind of a shock to me. Probably it was a shock to a lot of you too. Because I felt like I was a cursed man and everything was against me. I even felt like God was against me. And when he said God has a plan for your life, immediately I got excited, like, you're kidding me, right? Then, he, then, then my next thought was, well, it must be to hurt me, to harm me. But I read here, it said, no, no, it's actually to give you a future. Some of you understand when it's like to be in darkness and it feels like there's no future. Even in church for a while, you feel like there's no future. Some of you in the home, it feels for a season, even though you're in the home, you feel like you have no future. Even though you're in the home, it feels like there's no future. But if you stick with it and you stick with it and you stick with it and you understand the promises of God, you realize that God has a future for you. I, I, I literally didn't never, I never thought I could be happy with just one woman. Hello. I'm not a victory outreach. Come on, somebody. I, I never, 
Nowadays, you got to say different things, you know? You're like, we have the song, when a man loves a woman. Now it's like, you know, a man loves a man. Hello. I'm just saying. That's what we're dealing with now. I said, that's what we're dealing with now. We, I did a youth meeting yesterday, and we were breaking all that stuff off the youth. But they're confused. They got no fathers. And the world's saying, hey, you're, you're a girl, but you're a boy. You're a boy. You're a girl. The devil's a liar. How I many know they got to be set free? How I many know we got to preach the truth? We can't sugarcoat this stuff. Sugarcoating gospel doesn't work. Not for our kind of people. We need to hear it. Tell it like a tit is. Come on, somebody. Tell me the truth, man. Don't play with me. Don't plagiarize me. Tell me if I'm messed up so I can be delivered. And I remember hearing the word for the first time, I know the plans I have for you. And then I was like, man, are you kidding me? Plans to give you hope, a future. And I, and I read a scripture where God said, your wife's going to be like a fruitful vine. Like a fruitful vine. For, I'm like, I'm thinking, wife? How am I going to ever have a wife? I got no money. How many of you got no money? You got no honey. Talk about a shift. Come on. I needed some shift in my money. I couldn't drug deal no more, so I got to do something. You know what I mean? Got no career, you know? Hello. He's like, I'm going to give you a wife. I'm going to prosper you. Like, man, I can't, because my hero was Scarface. Say hello to my little friend. Come on now. What am I, come on, somebody. I mean, like, that was my, that was my hero until I realized how he died, and I'm like, whoa. He sh it's like a God used that movie. The devil used it to corrupt me, and then one day God's like, look at how he died. Oh, you're right. Come on. <laughs> I used to like that mountain of cocaine. Come on now. <laughs> Then I realized he died. Oh, man, it was, I don't want to die like that. Come on. He's like, I know the plans I have for you. And I was like, I'm going to give you a, a wife and fruitful wife and all. I'm like, oh, really? No way. And, he goes, and then I'm going to give you children. And they're going to be around your table, strong children. I got strong children. Anybody got strong children? Sometimes I look at my kids like, why are you so strong? Like strong-willed. And then I look at my wife and me. And I say, well, the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Leadership when they're born. Come on up. Hello. So I'm like, God's like, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to it, it feels like it's so far away. It's so far away. You know, you're going you're gonna, to you know, you're gonna be prosperous. You're gonna, the, some of the promises, God's going to give you houses you didn't build and land you don't own. It's all, it's, it just seems so far away. How many know God says if you pray, you'll produce that plan in your life? If you seek me and you seek first the kingdom of God, how many know everything you need will be given to you? I'm going to encourage the brothers in the home. Don't leave until they kick you out. In the, no, no, not kick you out. I shouldn't say that. Until they graduate you out. Come on. That's the term, kick you out, is actually a good term, but some guys don't read it right. <laughs> so you got to explain things nowadays, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but don't leave until you, because sometimes the guy's in the home, and all of a sudden the wife, the guy's sober for three weeks. She's like, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> you ready to come home? He ain't ready. He, 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 he looks good on the outside, but he's still jacked up in his head. No, I had to bury a lot of guys that the wife took them out too early. They backslid and they overdosed and killed them. So you stay there, you get right. Listen, what were we going to do when they had no, they, they weren't working before? Maybe I'm in the wrong place, huh? Maybe I'm in the wrong. I believe in men, so that's why. So anyway, I was there five years, so I know something about the home. When I told Pastor Al that, he's like, what? You a mess up. I said, yeah, a little bit, you know. <laughs> I don't know you're in the home five years, something's wrong with you. Come on. But I'm good now. Kind of, you know. <laughs> Come on, clap like we're going to have a good time today. <laughs> Come on, we're going to have a good time. But now we know God has great plans for you. He has great plans for your family. He has plans for your children. And maybe I keep feeling this. Some of your kids, you know, you gotta, you, you, like, you, 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 like you, God's plan is that way and they're that way. How many know you don't get discouraged because they're going that way? You pray and you pray and you pray and you, I don't care how far they run. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care because, you know, somebody, somebody, man, you, I saw your kid at the bar. I saw your kid at the gas lamp. I saw your kid. You say, don't worry about my kid. They're working on their testimony. I'm praying and my, oh, it's, all, it's like a rubber band. They're running and they're running and it's going to stop and they're going to bungee jump back to the house of God because prayer produces the plan of God. You know, when I was getting going to get born again, my mom started going to church, serving God, going to Bible college, all that good stuff. And But they're, well, not, they're all in Bible college, serving God. The cops show up and raid the house. 
18 cop cars, the ghetto bird. I said the ghetto bird in Australia. 25,000 people, Planet Share Conference. I'm preaching. I said, out. I said, and it was a ghetto bird, and they're like, I said, don't worry about it. It's the LA, it's a bird we have in LA. Come on. I said, <laughs> I said, <laughs> they look at me like, 18 cop cars, like, who did Pastor Russell put up here? Come on. But I'm, everything, I'm, and I'm already in jail, like 10 year embezzlement case, and they're raiding the house because I sold drugs to an undercover cop, all these kind of crazy things. That's what they said. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I was never there. That was my brother. Come on. So, <laughs> and it, it looks bad, man. It looks just bad. It looks bad. And my mom grabs my dad's hand and said, No, we're not quitting. We're not backing down. And then, and then I got out by the supernatural power of God. And, and, but what happened at that time, at that time in the 90s, they were killing everybody. They were killing everybody because you weren't paying money. You know what I mean? Everyone had to pay money. So, and a lot of us were like, you, I ain't paying nobody. We're arrogant. And so the, everyone started fighting and everyone started, you, I don't have to explain it. It's, it's, they were throwing green lights on everybody. Come on. They were killing everybody. And it was, it was they kind of slowed all that down. But it was wild. It was like the 90s. It was, it was, like, a, it was like a wild. L.A. was wild. And I was right in the midst of it, the drug dealer of the city. And I was right in there. And so I had people, hits on my life, they killed killing my friends. And, and the spirit of murder was coming against me. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It's a real spirit. and Because the people started dropping like flies. All your friends, there's a battle. It's a spirit of murder. And I, think, I, I, I knew in my heart I got about two weeks to live. Because it was on. It was a war. It was a battle zone. It was 90s. It was crazy. It was drive-by shootings before they stopped it. It was wild, man. It was the jungle. And you know what? My mom, her prayer warriors called her, six of them. They don't know what that I was. My mom never told them I was doing what I was doing. My mom didn't even know the depth I was in. But they called her because they were in the spirit. And they said, the spirit of murder is trying to take Jason out. And they began to go into a prayer in a season of fasting. Why? Because they needed this little guy to get shifted into the kingdom of God. <laughs> Clap like you believe prayer can set your children free. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't matter how far I ran. That prayer was bringing me out, it was setting me free. And the next thing I know, I find myself at a concert, Christian concert with my mom. Because I felt bad after I got out, I felt bad. So she said, come to the concert. She didn't say Christian, of course, because how many know you don't tell your cr crackhead kid it's a Christian concert? Come on. <laughs> All tweaked out. <laughs> I love Victory Outreach. I love it. I love me some Victory Outreach. Come on, Victory Outreach. Ain't nobody like Victory Nobody like Victory Outreach. I was at the mother church, and I took some of my, my, my team. I said, see that they have here? I said, this is nowhere in the world. And I tried to tell the, the congregation, I said, don't take for granted what you have here. The loyalty, the family, the commitment. God has raised up a people. Come on, call victory, outreach, treasures out of darkness. Can you give God a clap and an offering for the vision that God has given this house? This movement. And so, and so, so I go I end up at this concert, Christian concert, and I'm, I go, Mom, there are lights, you know, a lot of lights, because I got to endure this thing. So there's a lot of lights, so I take a bunch of hits of acid. I, I go to the concert, I'm like, wow. All of a sudden, the guy gets up there, it's Carmen. Remember Carmen back in the day? Brother Carmen, all of a sudden, he starts bringing all these, like, dolls on stage, these demons, and he's beating them up with his guitar. And I'm like, wow, come on. And he's hitting the demon, the alcohol demon. I'm like, I got him. He's like, the murder demon, I got him. He's a cochino demon, I got a lot of them, come on. <laughs> And he's beating him up. And next thing you know, it freaked me out because all of a sudden, a tear came down my eye like that. I didn't cry since I was seven. My dad left me. I didn't cry since I was a little boy. And then I got scared. I was like, what's happening? You cry in this game, you get killed. And all of a sudden, one tear became like a fountain. And then I sobered up from the acid, which doesn't happen. And then I felt the love of the Father. And that day, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I'm preaching. Come on, I'm preaching right now. God's, God's, but watch this, watch this, watch this. This is heavy what I'm going to say. I'm going to say this. Because after that, I, guess what I did? I went home, I picked up the phone, I called my friends. And I said, the old, my, my old lifestyle is over. No, I didn't. I picked up the phone, I said, bring the keg, bring the bill, be, beer, bring it. It's on. We're going to party. I said, I said, why? I said, because I'm saved. Come on. <laughs> How many know we can't judge people too quick? Come on, somebody. I was saved. I was saved. I was going to heaven, but I, I was barely going there. <laughs> so I 
So I'm partying, and then two weeks later, two weeks later, all of a sudden, I feel that, that feeling's gone. And I said, Mom, I want that feeling. She tells me, you're struggling, right, Neil? I'm telling you prayer. She goes, you're struggling, right, Neil? She's telling my mom, in my mind, you know, your criminal mind. You say, no. But out of my spirit, first time this ever happened. Yeah. I said, voodoo. <laughs> and she said, she goes, she goes, she, I said, well, Mom, I want that feeling bad. She said, well, Neil, you, like, she busted Carlos Santana on me. I said, you got to change your evil way. <laughs> Babe. <laughs> I go, she's like, you want to go to a home, huh? In my mind, a home. Home. Yeah. <laughs> And then she goes, she, she went deep on me. She was like doing Holy Spirit voodoo. Come on. And she's like, and if there's no beds, you're going to, you'll sleep on the floor. I'm like, floor? I'm a big, bad gangster. I don't know floor. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and then she goes, and you'll go today, huh? Because, you know, sometimes you got to get them that right there in that moment. Otherwise, they're gone. And I go, oh, God, I'm going to I got a girl. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> that day, I end up, I try to get into Vic Drivers, but you didn't want me. Come on, somebody. How many of you wanted me? You just didn't have no room because there were so many crackheads in the city. Hello. How many thank God we're going to open up more homes? Say amen, somebody. I said, how many thank God we're going to. Listen, listen, I'm going to say something. I'm going to prophesy right now. The best days of Victor Irish are ahead of you. You're going to have, listen, there's going to be more drug addicts than you've ever known in the history of America. Because right now it's a plague. It's, it's a plague from the top down. Prescription med. They're trying to legalize all this stuff thinking that's the way it's going to make it worse. And thank God that God has raised the church up for such a time as this. <laughs> Nobody wants to clap in here and encourage me. But I'm trying to help somebody get a revelation of what God is using. This is an end time church. <laughs> with an end time strategy. Now, so, so anyway. I end up in the home, but guess what happens? When you're in the home, I don't know why the Lord has me on this, but this is a powerful thing because right here I have where it says, where, where Paul said, my dear children, I'm again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you because people don't just get saved. P listen to me. People don't just get saved. Nobody here just got saved. Somebody had to war in the spirit for your soul. Because Satan, this is what Satan does. Once I was blind, but now I could see. And we're in the dark. And we're in the dark and we can't see Jesus. Because anybody that could see him would never reject him. And we're in darkness because of the strongholds, because of the culture mentality. But when, what prayer does, it removes the veil. And it removes the veil so we can see him for who he is. Once I saw him, I got saved. Come on. How many know? And And Paul is saying right here, Paul is saying right here, he's saying, listen, I prayed for you to get saved. I birthed you. He goes, but again, I'm actually praying because you're not going to make it if we don't pray for you. And the Lord is trying to say to you today, many are going to come through prayer and so, so many didn't make it because the prayer wasn't strong enough. Because when somebody first gets saved, it takes them a, a season before they can stand on their own. They're little babies. So you literally have to carry them in the spirit. Until what? Until Christ is formed in them. Until they're discipled. And then they could stand on their own two feet. And then they could pray for somebody else. But there's a season in the life of a baby Christian where they have to be carried. And in the spirit, we have to carry guys in the home. We have to carry the women in the home. We have to carry new congregation in the home, in, in the church. We got to carry our, we got to, we got to, we got to pray them in, and then we got to pray them through. We got to pray them in, and we got to pray them through. We got to pray them in, and we got to pray them through. How many know prayer is the power to do, come on, clap like I'm preaching, better than you're clapping. Come on, somebody. James 5 said it this way. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Now, this I love this because, and then we're going to wrap it up with this because I don't know what time it is. Is it 10.33? Okay, we'll wrap it up soon. <laughs> Say the prayer of a righteous person. So, so, so right, right there lets you know how you have to approach prayer. You can't approach it religiously like, oh God, you have to come boldly to the throne. I said, you have to come boldly to the throne. That's your inheritance. You have to come boldly to the throne. 
Because it's the prayer of the righteous man that makes tremendous power available. Elijah was just like us. He, right? he, he was just like us, it says. Meaning he was up and he was down. Now watch me. Watch me. Sometimes because we're, maybe we don't think we're spiritual enough. Maybe we, we, made, maybe, you know, we, we made a mistake last summer. Come on. Maybe we kicked the dog. We, we, come on. We didn't feed the goldfish. Come on. I'm just going to say that whatever. We feel like we're not worthy to pray. But how many know you can pray and you can come boldly to God because you are, you are the righteousness of God. You're not going to be, you already are as, I'm going to say a big statement. Let me say this. You are as right with God right now than you're ever going to be. You're not right with God because you, you do everything right. You're right with God because he did everything right. Let me say that again. You're not right with God because you did everything right. You're right with God because he did everything right. Are you hearing me? On that cross, you became the righteousness of God. You have to understand that because the devil will tempt you to make mistakes, to get angry, to fight with your wife, to do all these things. By the way, you better get along with your wife because your prayers won't be heard. But here's another thing. <laughs> That's biblical. Come on. But the enemy will put that, he'll, he'll tempt you and tempt you and tempt you to make mistakes. He'll tempt you and tempt you. Why? To bring condemnation in your heart. So when you're ready to come to God, you feel condemned. And that, that condemnation will make you run from God, not to God. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve when the enemy tempted them so they get them out of the presence of God so they had no confidence before God. But God sent his only son to die on the cross to become sin so you would be his righteousness. So when you struggle or you sin or you make a mistake, you don't run from God. You don't run from church. You don't run from the things of God. You run to the presence of God because it's only the presence of God that's going to set you free. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? The prayer of a righteous person, here it is, is powerful. And effective. It literally means it makes tremendous power available. So when we begin to pray, the anointing increases. Why does the anointing, wave at me if you want the anointing to increase in your life, in your church, in your home. Come on, wave at me. How many know the anointing? I'm going to preach on the anointing tonight. Because the anointing covers prosperity. The anointing covers brokenness. The anointing covers bondage. The anointing covers everything. The anointing tears down. The anointing builds up. The anointing brings release. The anointing brings increase. The anointing brings... How many want more anointing? Well, well, prayer releases that power. Prayer releases that power. Why? Because prayer is dependency. It says less of me, more of you. So that dependency releases that anointing. That prayer releases that anointing, that powerful prayer. And then it said, Elijah prayed passionately that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Look at the power of those prayers. Look at the power of that prayer warrior. He prays in the natural, in the natural, but it changed the supernatural. When we pray, lives are eternally affected. Watch this. Elijah's prayer was used to bring God's super into the natural. All of a sudden, he prays, and he stops the rain. Then he prays again, and it rains. And that's a heavy statement because prayer releases prosperity. Amen. When David lost all that, it was prayer that took, at Ziklag, it was prayer that recovered all. It was prayer that restored it. But here, right here, it's powerful because it says this, this man of God got into prayer, and all of a sudden, he began to birth in the natural what he was birthing in the spirit. And when you're birthing something in the, in, in, in the spirit to show up in the natural, there's a travail that happens. And I'm, I'm afraid for this young generation that they don't know how to travail. They don't know how to travail. We have preachers that are preaching sermons that they never birthed out of the spirit. That's why there's no authority on the messages. They're trying to look for the next YouTube preacher and this little, but that doesn't break the yoke. It's messages that are birthed out of prayer. It's vision that's birthed out of prayer. It's strategy that's birthed out of prayer. It's system that's birthed out of prayer. It's vision that's birthed out of, come on, pray. Somebody give God a praise like we're going to pray. But look at verse, again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, the earth produced its crops, its prosperity. But look at verse 19. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring in that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover a multitude of sin. So he, he's talking about prosperity and rain, but then it switches and he says, but actually it can get people saved and stop people from backsliding. What? 
just happened. You're talking about stopping rain, releasing rain, and then he switches it in the same breath and says, actually, this will stop people from backsliding, and this will get people saved. Same thing Paul said. I labor again until Christ is formed in you. And here's the word right here. Victory outreach, you must understand our beginnings. Before anything, we are a praying people. Prayer releases greater spiritual authority to set captives free. Prayer dependency releases greater anointing that breaks the yoke. Prayer causes the Christian to not backslide. The spirit of backsliding is broken in Jesus' name. You ought to clap in here and pull on this thing. This is why Paul warned the Galatian. He said, hey, why are you becoming foolish? You began in the spirit. Are you going to made mature by the flesh? And this is my big warning to our church right now. You know, in our church, we have a very organized church. We're very organized. I think we're almost, almost 4,000 people right now, one congregation. And I think we have 1,000 students right now in our schools. We have almost 400 uh, disciples, small group leaders. We're in a revival. And it's like an oil machine. Like you get it. It's, it's, it's really good. People from, we had uh, uh, 800, church, 800 churches movement, the Acts movement, come to our church last week to learn how we do things. But I have to teach them right away. You're going to learn a system, a structure, a strategy. You can take whatever you want. They're principles. They always work. They work in Australia. They work in Asia. They work in South America. They work in L.A. They're principles. And you build strategy based on principles. Right? I said, and I said, but don't miss what we are. Because you could have this wonderful machine, but without the oil, the machine don't go. And prayer is the oil to run the machine. Because if you're not careful, the system and the strategy I teach my guys will become almost like God. And we'll depend on that more than we depend on God. But if we stay in prayer, when we keep in prayer, then the, the, the system becomes a blessing, not a curse. How many of we could become professional at this stuff? We could become professional at what we wear, how we talk. What we preach, what we sing, we can become professional. But if we're not careful, the anointing will wane. It'll get less and less and less. How many know as we get older in the vision, the anointing doesn't get weaker. The anointing gets stronger because we pray. But in, like, so when I'm, this is heavy, huh? This, I'm in the vein right now. This, we're in. Bam, we're there. There's the vein. We're in it. This is what the Lord is saying. This is, this is thus saith the Lord. Now, when I come off the road. From traveling and helping ministries with the, with, with the vision of saving souls, making disciples. When I come off the road, when I come into our church, the, 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 our church grows when I'm not there. How many know that's the way this church is? It grows when we're not there. I was, I was out for a month last year, and it, it, it talk about humbling. How are the numbers? Well, Pastor, we grew by 25% when you were in here. Amen. Part of, you, part of you says, that's right. The other part goes like, man, what do you need me for? Come on. But, but my job, when I come in off the road, my job, when I, like here, I don't preach a lot on Sunday night. I don't do any of that. And, I, and we have teams of preaching, so, you know, it's not like I'm the only guy. But my role there is to come in, and, I, and I, this, this is how I call it. I come in to check the atmosphere. Because I want to know, is this an atmosphere dependent on system, structure, organization, which we need? Or is this an atmosphere dependent on the presence of God? And I'll go like that. And I look at my leader and say, it's dry up in here. Ain't no rain in here. And I think the next season, we're going to raise up a generation, a third wave. The number one thing, we got to teach them structure, system, organization. They're going to come out with new structure, new systems. Even um, It's not going to change our vision, but how many know there's many ways to accomplish the same thing? We're going to modernize. Whatever we have to do, modernize. All that's fine. We need to do all that and more in a bag of chips with some tapatio and lemon and Doritos. Sour cream, too. Come on. Con todo. Everything. Come on, somebody. Might as well throw a gordo in there. Amen. Whatever. That's fine. But the, but the foundation has to be the same. And it has to be prayer. 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 
prayer, 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 prayer. If you got prayer, you got the structure, you got revival. Not just revival, you got sustainable revival. We don't want just one little move of God over there and a move. No, we want something sustainable that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger generationally. Come on, clap like this is a word from the Lord. Come on! Oh! Stand on your feet, please. I'm going to give you a powerful word. 1 Corinthians 3.10. Now listen to this. I'm, I want you to lean into this, please. According to the grace of God, which was given to me. Listen to this. As a wise and master builder. Look at that. I have laid the foundation. See, in our, in our ministry, I am the, the, the wise and master builder. And I'm not building a building necessarily. I know we, we need buildings, but we're talking about people. So when, I, when, I, when, I, when I'm in ministry, I'm looking at a person. That's my building. That's why when somebody comes in our ministry, the first thing we have to do is what? We have to, we have to, we have to build a foundation. We have to tear out. So we, we go to six months of intense deliverance. Because we got to get out of you everything the Father never put in you. Then once the, once the hole's dug, we uproot, we tear out. Then we got to lay the foundation. Because depending on the foundation, that's how high we can go. Are you with me now? So Paul said, I'm a wise and master builder. And I've laid the foundation. I've laid the principles of this ministry. I've laid it already. I've already laid the principles. Now, these are unchangeable principles. Now, we can build the house upon it and all that. But this, this, this is the foundation. You can't mess with the foundation. Because if you mess with the foundation, the house can fall. This, I'm in the spirit right now. God has raised up Sonny Argonzoni and Julie Argonzoni to lay a foundation. When nobody wanted drug addicts. When nobody wanted people like me. Or that maybe they had a rehab home, but you put them in the rehab home and, and then get them sober and that's all. But God gave a man of God and a woman of God a vision. That there's more than just a drug addict. There's preachers, there's pastors, there's leaders, there's fathers, there's mothers, there's business owners. Come on, clap like this is heavy. Come on, come on, VO! I feel the anointing on me right now. According to the grace of God, and it was God's grace. We don't earn it, we didn't earn this vision. We didn't deserve this vision. It's God's grace. It's His mercy. And think about it. Think how heavy this vision is. Here it is 50 years later. And this vision is more relevant today than it even was yesterday. And it will be more relevant tomorrow than it was 50 years ago. You know why? Because sin is increasing. But we're sin about grace much more about to the nations of the world. He said, I laid the foundation. And here we, here's, here's where we come. And another will build upon it. But let each one take heed yeah. how you build upon it. Because why? Times change. And we're making changes here. We got new screens. Crown moldings gone. Buildings bigger. New stage. Modernizing a bit. Cool. Biblical. You got to change with the time. Part of a death of a movement is when you don't, you, you under, you, you under contextualize or you over contextualize, meaning you're not, you don't modernize. So you're modernizing and you should. We modernize and we'll continue to change 20 years from now. It'll be different. Our songs may be a little different. Maybe the colors are a little different. Maybe instead of LED, they're like, I don't know, laser beams. I don't know, whatever. Don't touch the foundation. That's good. Don't. Come on. Come on. Come on. And sometimes, I, 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 oh Lord Jesus. Sometimes the next generation comes up and they think because they want to modernize, they want to get rid of everything. 
they want to throw the baby with the bath water and they end up ruining what God wants to do how many know God has given us a foundation here don't mess clap like I'm talking prophetically and the number one foundation we know we're called to the broken we know we're called to the hurting we know we're called to those that people even the church says we don't want them we understand that we don't mess with that. But I believe there's also another foundation that everything was birthed out of. And that's the foundation of prayer. Because the first thing I learned in the home, the first thing I learned was if you want to get free from drugs, get on your knees. If you want your life to get better, get on your knees. If you want to get your crazy thoughts better, get on your knees. Get on your knees and get a hold of God. Dependency on God. Oh Lord, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost bring things up. When this ministry started, there was no money. There was no help. I saw the movie the other day. And I've been following this ministry for 26 years. Faith, I've been watching it. And it was humble beginnings. Where Julie had to believe God for a miracle pancakes. I love Pastor Sunny. Go make some pancakes. Pancakes is like a miracle. It's like a miracle pancake. Come on. But it's, it, it's amazing. But this ministry was started with dependency on God. And that means this ministry started with prayer. Believing God to pay the bills. Believing God to, to, to put food on the table. Believing God to help these, to get a home to put these drug addicts in. And now look how blessed we are. We got buildings. We got facilities. We got property. We got prosperity. God's been good. But don't ever forget, we started in prayer. And if God's going to do another wave, it's going to end in prayer. Come on, somebody lift your hand.